Guys, this is Fun Automotive, and in this video, I'm going to do just a quick little tour on the finished dash on the Jeep Grand Cherokee WJ. Now, I was able to completely finish it. This is days later. Um, I actually got it done in like a day and a half. Got everything taken care of. New blender doors, blender motor, actuator door, um, new vacuum line in the rear behind the heater core housing box thing. So let me just turn it around and I'll show you everything and we'll get to it. All right, here's the finished part. I will have pictures showing what it looked like. Sorry I didn't record it, but I will have pictures of what it looks like with the dash off and all that stuff. And one of the pictures I'm gonna be showing now is the heater core. It's a big black box underneath behind this part of the dash on the passenger side. There's a big long piece. It's got the heater core in it and then the AC um, it's like it's a, like a condenser, a little condenser for the air conditioning and then you got the heater core. They're all on that side, all on the passenger side. And it's a long box going to about the end of right here. It's coming to about right here all the way to the end over there and like I said heater core air conditioning unit and then you got the front vents and then each and every vent opening will have a vacuum actuator thing that works off of vacuum only it's not electric it's all vacuum and then this guy right here that will have like 10 hoses coming off of it because this is all vacuum so it will have like 10 hoses coming off to it off of it going in all the way to each and every vent telling it to go to the feet face defrost vents you know which would be these also and then like I said the feet face defrost vents and pretty much that's it oh and which would be the feet down here would be the feet in the back for the rear passengers also but anyways, this is the finished product right here. I started by removing the dash and getting all of it unbolted and then I worked over to this side and then you have a bracket under the steering wheel, taking the bracket off and then there's a few bolts way underneath all the way up to the top that you gotta get from down here. And then over here you got side bolts and then you got a bunch of side bolts right here behind the dash once you get all those loose and then take off all these 10 mil all I used throughout the whole progress the whole process was only 10 millimeter deep and 13 millimeter deep that's all I needed throughout the whole thing just to get this thing off it's very easy tons of plugs though there's I had to unplug the whole AC ECU um, fuse panel connection just the whole wiring harness that goes to it and there's a whole big plug over there underneath that panel that right underneath that panel that has a humongous plug to it also as well as right here like I said and then once you get all this sucker off I uh, went and put it aside I even took the whole steering wheel and column off because you're gonna have to remove all that all right, so I disconnected it from the part that goes to the steering box and because it disconnects from down here to disconnect it from down here to pull the whole shaft of the steering wheel and everything out. You don't have to do it from inside the hood. You can do it just from down here by your feet. And once you do all that, then the steering wheel, you don't want to twist the steering wheel when it's off all the way around because you'll, you'll mess up that clock spring thing. So don't do that. Just try to keep the steering wheel as straight as possible when you put it away. And then you can start getting in deeper and working your way all the way across to get the dash out. But I will show you the pictures of the heater core and with the dash off. I actually took it off and left it outside on top of my dumpsters for about, like I said, a day and a half. So yeah, that's what it looks like. I had all the center dash off, steering wheel was off, whole dash was off. I took the floor mats, took them, put them all in the back, made sure everything that was gonna get dirty was safe and out of the way. But when I was done, I did a complete deep cleaning on it and cleaned up all the dash. Solid, solid, very solid dash. Um, as you could tell, I don't know if you guys noticed, this top plastic piece is off. You guys probably already know. 
it was old. It gets, you know, it's been 117 degrees here down in Phoenix because I moved back down here. And sure enough, when I took the clamps, off, the clips off where those red things are, that's where the metal clamps, clips squeeze inside. And it unclipped right here and unclipped at that end but right when I got to the center and unclipped it it immediately just shattered the center piece off so I pulled it off and right now I'm in the process of going to the junkyard every once a week and finding a cover to replace it and I found a few of them but the majority of them are broken or really badly cracked so I'm just looking for a clean one like I had mine had like no cracks in it so, that time will come. I'll find one eventually. But, yeah, that's it. That, you don't, you just literally put it on top of there and you just boom, 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 boom. Just push it in and it clips right in. No bolts, no screws, no hassle. And then just pull it up to take it off. Very easy, simple. Um, these speakers are good on this side. That speaker over there needs to be replaced. I don't know if you could see it. Right there big finger but yeah that speaker needs to be replaced along with this one down here but these this speaker right there the dash speaker and this speaker is good uh, just barely noticed that whenever I was testing them out um, I don't know if I told you guys but that's a new stereo I, well not new but new used new to me um, got a new tape and one and radio from the junkyard now the tape works properly Works with the, don't mind the mess back there, works with the 10 disc player, disc CD player behind, along that wall right there. There's a 10 disc CD player uh, that sits in there, so everything works properly. I did, I, don't, I can't believe I didn't get it on video also, but I did just put in all new ball joints. Right before I did the lift kit on it, I put in all brand new ball joints. Top and bottom front, top and bottom ball joints, all brand new. So that's all good. Next, I will have a video on it. I am going to be doing um, all front, top, and bottom, rear, top, and bottom control arms. I'm doing the whole set with a brand new set of shocks. So it's all going to be all brand new underneath this thing. And then after I do that, I, like I said, I was going to fix in the last video that damaged rear hatch. And then I am going to re be replacing the steering box as well. Once that's all done and replaced, this thing's pretty much done in, that, in the suspension until my wife wants to go up another two inches to five inches of lift. I'm, I got pucks on there right now. I was thinking about just throwing some two inch lift springs, a stiffer spring, throwing them under there and raising it up to five inches of lift. And then she wants to run 35s on some nice wheels. These are just temporary wheels. This is a temporary setup, actually. So, yeah, but she will be wanting to run 35 soon. This is three inch lift on 32 inch tires and 17 inch wheels. But all in all, I love it. The transfer case is the crappy transfer case, the 247, I think it's called. And I will be changing that out soon. And while I do that, I should do the rear um, output seal on that transmission. But yeah, that's it. Now, it doesn't look very big, very big on video, but it is, man. I can crawl from the front all the way out of the back now. This thing, I was barely even able to fit my chest under it. It was so low to the ground. It is so much more maintenanceable being lifted. So much more. I like it a lot. I enjoy it. This is my favorite Jeep now, other than the Liberty, which I know some people really like the Liberty, but... This is my favorite Jeep. Well, it's kind of always been my favorite Jeep, but I really do like the WJ. Just rolling up the window. Okay, this is my favorite Jeep, the WJ, only because it comes with that reliable straight six and it comes with a very 
uh, not as reliable, I don't think, but it comes with a very nice V8 also and a high, and a high output version of the 4.7. But all in all, this V8 has over 300,000 miles on it and it runs flawless and the tranny is flawless. Shifts perfect, it runs perfect. Everything on this Jeep works perfect except the transfer case. That's the only thing. Once I get that transfer case fixed, we're all good to go. Um, after I, I, I didn't forgot to mention whenever I do the transfer case, I'm going to redo the rear differentials and front differential, rear and front differential, and redo the fluid on it and everything and get it all tip top. So it'll be all good. That's the end of the video for the Jeep Grand Cherokee. I hope you guys like it. Um, I know most of you came to my YouTube for my uh, Jeep Liberty, but this is what I'm putting content on to now. I hope you guys like that. Um, of course, I'll get a, not, a lot of new um, Jeep Grand Cherokee people who really want to go to my channel just for the Jeep Grand Cherokee now, I'm sure. But yeah, this is how it's, this is what's going to be on my channel mostly now. The Liberty, I'll show it sometimes here and there, but the Grand Cherokee for sure. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys really like it and you'll see more of this in the future and my Grand Cherokee when I get it also. I've been talking about it for a long time now, but I will get one soon. All right, I'll see you all later and God bless you all.